and welcome back. Uh, sorry about the drop of stream. We aren't sure why that is happening, um, but um, nevertheless, <laughs> we are here, and uh, we will uh, jump back to all of you arriving at the familiar gates of Candlekeep itself. Let me put the Candlekeep music on because uh, that's what we're for. Where is it? I got it. It's here somewhere. It says... I've lost it. Trinity, help! <laughs> okay, oh, really? Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> one second. Uh, where is oh, it? Okay, it's I'm that. looking here. It's not that. Yeah, I had it. I had it here somewhere. But... Oh, cool. Check your messages. Cool, cool. Oh, oh okay. What? Why? All right. Why am I checking messages? Um. Cool. Check the stream. Cool, cool. What's wrong? With Just you? say that Joey's missing, man. It's not that hard. <laughs> 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 Joey's missing. Uh, okay. <laughs> I just. <laughs> not everything has to be a puzzle, Lucky. Come on. I, I just. I found it. I found it. I, I, okay. I messaged yeah, him and, and, okay. and didn't leave you on and like roll, or, or on roll twenty and all this and I was like, why isn't he seeing the messages? <laughs> oh, no. All right. Sorry. Okay. So uh, I, we found the music. I'm putting it on now. As you uh, go through uh, the gates once again, you arrive there um, after a long final journey after two and a half days as it would generally take five days but with the help of uh, bruce you are guided uh, by his guidance and um, you arrive there kind of close to late evening you're tired you walk through the gates and see the courtyard once again and you head to the um to the is it called temple of rest or uh, uh where you you have your uh, uh, your own place to rest uh, for the cock seekers, and you arrive, open the door, and uh, firstly, uh, you see that there's a few items on the table that have been left for you. Um, there are three letters, and there is a bag, and there is a book. Ooh. Uh, are the letters addressed to anybody? Yes, they are. Um, as you approach, Aki, yeah, you look down and you see three letters. These three letters, one of them, is addressed to um, the Caravan of Chaos. One of them is addressed to Bruce. Um, uh, it says Bruce Lockwood on it. Uh, the other one is addressed to Maz. Oh, Ziggy, sorry. I, I missed a wee bit there. My my At my end, you guys all cut off from me. I think something at my end went a bit wrong. I, I missed, right at the very start of the conversation, the bit you said there's a letter for Bruce addressed to Bruce Lockwood. Did I miss anything important before that little bit? Mm, no, uh, there's a letter okay. for, you, for, for Bruce, uh, and it says Bruce Lockwood on it, um, not uh, just Bruce. Uh, okay. And then you also, Aki, you also see a book. Um, which uh, says, uh, let me just get that up because uh, slowly, where is it? Uh, it's in here. There it is. Uh, the uh, the history of Dragon Spear Castle. Uh, the history of Dragon Spear Castle will be certainly interesting enough. That, uh... Aki will pick that up. Yeah, That's the one that we went to that he saw the vision in. Is that true? That is true. The, the minds of the, the Caves of Moria situation? Oh god. Yeah. Could, I, That's the one. could I possibly... Like, this is Rune, sorry. Um, uh, can I possibly read that book? It is... <laughs> it is has a note, uh, and it says, um, uh, on your request, Aki Flammercaster, signed by Bookworm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Uh, then Aki will uh, pick pick that up and have a and, and obviously read the note and have a little little look at it. But we'll stay interested as to what the rest of the stuff on the table is. Okay. Um, do you pass on the the letters to 
because there's one addressed to you as a party, one addressed to Bruce, and one addressed to Ziggy. Uh, well, Aki will give uh, uh, Ziggy his, Bruce his, and ask uh, Yogu to open the one for the, the whole party. And um, do I recognize the handwriting? You do, yes. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, this could only be for one person. I mean, the only other people I speak to are currently in this room. So I'll, I'll read it later. I'm sure it's nothing. Very well. Um, shall I read the party one first and... I'll have a look um, at mine. What's, what's in the bag first? Hmm? There's, there's, yeah, there's a bag also there as well. a bag. Can I open the bag? In there, you see uh, a lot of platinum in there. Oh. Ooh! Uh, I oh. think we're getting paid today, guys. And I will. Oh. I'll start counting the platinum and the gold. I'm Is guessing it's from our dwarven associates. Is there a note? Um, there there's no note there. <laughs> it, that that could be the latter for the group, to be honest. Oh, well, well that, that is true, Yago. Sure, I okay. Um, the 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 there. Okay. Oh my god, I forgot. Oh. I totally forgot, Yago. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Uh, Harold will just take the letter. For the love of God. You open it up. Right. <laughs> uh, in the letter, it says, Here is your next batch of payment as agreed upon. But my brother and I believe we need to discuss new arrangements for the deal we have made already. And we'll be coming down to Candlekeep in a few days to discuss. Um, and then it says 400 platinum. And it says, and then there's a second note, um, which was kind of... We... We were... Uh... Is should I, are you okay if I say it? What it says on the second one? Yeah, I'll just. Uh, you see a second note which has been uh, was attached under the um, under the first envelope uh, that you picked up, and as you turn it around, you, it says. Uh, we we came. Uh, you were not here. Let us know when you are back. And also, uh, how is uh, the gorgeous friend of yours? I'll just read that out to the party. Yep, it is uh, from our Dwarven Associates. Well, all right. Uh, Bruce, you could use the mirror to talk to them, tell them that we're here now and that we could just wait here. Is that Certainly. all right with you? Certainly. Right. Um, I'll use the mirror just to send a quick message. Uh, we're back at Candlekeep. We'll wait for you here. <laughs> all right. Meanwhile, uh, Platinum, can I borrow some of that? I'm hoping to replace some arrows. Ruin, as uh, you yes. finish counting, you count 400 platinum pieces in there. Uh, uh, uh sure, I'll take, hold on a second, um, math was never my forte, give me one second. Uh, uh, I gotta get uh, my calculator out for what if I uh, Everyone gets 66 platinum, but I'll take 67. I'll take, actually, I'll put the, the extra one platinum in, um, I'll put it in Yagu's count. He gets 67, we all get 66. Okay. Alright, add that in. Alright, so 66 platinum, okay. Uh, also, uh, platinum Bruce, richer. actually, uh, how much do I owe you for, before we left? I know you gave me some money to borrow for the arrows, that radiant arrow, along with the other arrows I got. You know, that was from the party fund, so you don't need to pay that back. Alright. Yeah, Bruce is like, no, no, that was the party fund. If, um, if you're going to the Enchanter, Errol, I'll go with you in a bit, but I, I need to read the slat first. It could be important. I'll wait for you yeah. outside the door. Yeah, right. I also yeah. will go with you to the Enchanter, but... Uh... You will all know that you've arrived quite very late and the Enchanter was closed, so I'll just put that today. The Enchanter was closed. Let's go to the yeah. Enchanter tomorrow. <laughs> yes, it is quite late, and to be honest, we have been walking for two and a half days. I mean, we could just knock on his door and just wait outside. He probably lives there. I mean... <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm place. joking. I'm oh, joking. We, uh, we did speak of... Um... Having uh, a, a, a part, a kind of a, car a caravan meeting, I think we should call it, uh, to try and clear the air and get, air and get some answers from, from each other. I think really? This... I agree. Uh, yes. Before we have our 
group talk, uh, Bruce, can we actually divide up the kitty as well? It technically already divided up, my friend. It's in the party bag. Uh, I know. I just wanted to take out a large... 67 of... platinum really isn't enough for you? Really? Ruin, I... I think we'll we'll do that after we've had our discussion. Fucking unbelievable. You know what? I, I'm gonna go to bed. Good night. Uh, Errold, I think you need to stay up for the discussion. I'll, I'll read my letter afterwards. Right, well... <clears throat> I'll get us started, um. Um, before Ruin. you start, I, mm. um... You, as you all know, I am able to cast a spell that makes it impossible for any of us to lie. Of course. I prefer that not to cast it, but... did not go over well so, so well last time. I think well, it might be required. if we want to do it right... We might have to do it that way. I'd rather not, but let's all be honest with each other. We, I prefer I to fair. go ahead knowing that we all have all the cards on the table right now instead of keeping any of them secret. So I think we should again, once again, vote for this to see if I find it reasonable. Uh, as do I. Yep. I'll agree with you. Alright. Fair. Well, okay. okay. Ruin. And look who's in the corner again. I'm... No arguments here. Okay. Then we're, uh, we are going to hear some hard truths, I imagine. Yogu, when, whenever you are ready. Uh, Yogu will... Lift his staff up in the air, his eyes will close for a minute, and when it will come down, uh, the room will slightly get filled with mist, and, um, well, everyone can make a wisdom, I believe. Your charisma it's saving throw. It's charisma. a charisma saving throw. Yeah, everyone can, but I assume... I'll just resist. Is uh, nope, not gonna make a saving throw. Can I just go with it? Yeah, Bruce will and not. Then, all of your eyes will start to shine a little shine of blue in them. If we resist, would he know? Yes. Yeah. He yes. Know. He knows. Okay. Right. Well. If I hope you don't mind if I get the the ball rolling, so to speak. We've learned a few things in our time at the Domain of Dread. We for what it's worth. I believe, I can't speak for, for Bruce, it was successful. We have lifted two curses. We got back all those canvases, destroyed them all, and then lifted all those other curses. Any holdover from our, time, our time at the spa is now done. And we've uh, become significantly wealthier for our trouble. It was touch and go, certainly, but we're all here, we're all alive, one piece, mission accomplished. We have, of course, learned something of our colleague, uh, Ruin Synergy. Or do you prefer Ignis? I think you owe us some kind of explanation, as well as a, an explanation of, during our conversation on a walk back to the Radiant Citadel, why you were so utterly unrepentant about what had happened. Well... <laughs> I feel like I'm more on a trial than in a group talk, but... I'll have my own revelation at some point as well. Don't worry, we're all here to be honest now, but I prefer to hear you out if... Ak Akio uses tail to hook the leg of a chair and pull, it, and pull it in this direction. Just not well enough and then grab it and expecting to be here a while. Errol's still going to be standing. <laughs> um... I prefer if you guys would. Oh, you could call me Ruin or Ignis, whatever you guys are comfortable with. I. <sighs> Dragons aren't the best at apologizing. We don't really. I've never really had the need to apologize to anyone. But I. 
am sorry for if I did try to kill you guys. Um, you did. Sure. But in my defense, I really don't remember that. Bruce winces. You um, Anyone who's paid attention to his winces or ticks at certain situations, or that's Bruce trying to make an opinion known in their shared space. I'm not Where lying. I can't lie. I really don't I remember know. trying to kill you guys. That is fair. You are in the zone of truth. Can you explain your utter unrepentance when we tried to explain to you what you did and you didn't, and then I quote, you're filled with more pride than ever. Kind of answers itself. I'd like an explanation in the zone. I... That's that's basically it. I, dragons are full of pride. I. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harold. How about you? You know what? No. You were, you you were just sitting there laughing and mocking me. No, I'm sitting taking... here laughing not at you, at this process, and that's the honest to god truth. Because since we're all being open here. I don't know why you expected a different answer, Bruce, than what we got. He's made it clear, this is who I am, this is just how it is, deal with it. And so far, you and Aki have been very, very tolerant and accepting of that. And you too, Bruce, by the way. But, aside from that point, Ruin, I need to stick in a group to meet my goals. And... It is true. I have tried to kill you. I have tried to kill Yagu. That is also true. Uh, pointing to the zone of truth. But, however, I was repentant for it. I have done nothing but try to make up and apologize for it. You, on the other hand, did nothing but joke and look down on all of us. It's not the fact you're a dragon that pisses me off. No, no, no. It's the fact that you can claim that we can trust you and be our friend when we're not even on the same ground. Now, who's is higher? That's personal opinion. And I don't trust you. And I never will. Because... Okay. I, um... had this aunt who raised wolves. Big-ass wolf. And one day I noticed her drowning one as a kid. And I talked to her, I, said, I asked her why, and she told me a story about this one wolf who was the biggest, baddest wolf she's ever raised, still. And this wolf went at bears by itself. Other wolves stay away from bears, this wolf just had it as a delicacy. Its nature just matched an apex predator. One winter, she took this wolf with her to go out hunting. Do you want to know what happened? Well, this wolf dived at this bear's leg, thinking of just nothing else, no hesitation. And so caught up in its own bloodlust, its own hunger for flesh, the bear just smashed its head in. One take. That was all it was. And so, my aunt also lost her hand smashing in that bear's head. After that, Ruin, to hunt, to survive the great adventurous perils, to go through all of this, you can't ever rely on somebody who's going to ever ignore danger and ever ignore the people they're with for self-interest. So, as far as I'm concerned, you're a wolf that'll at best get itself killed, at worst, make us lose a limb. Could I ask you just one question? Sure. What self-interest have I shown you? Oh, really? Besides preserving your own secrets? Besides preserving your own sense of money? Besides being just a greedy prick that looks down on us even from the moment we first met you? Can you give me an example of when I haven't... Pri I've 
I've helped you guys save. I've saved you guys. You have saved me. We fought together. When the mind flares were trying to tear you guys apart, I was the one yelling and trying to distract them. Yes, and I was the one also shooting my arrows at the mind flares. Just because you're in a dangerous situation with a group and you try to save yourself and it happens to work out with the group doesn't mean that you're not looking out for your self-interest. Errol, does that not also apply to when you ran and left us to deal with those giant crabs? Oh, None do you of mean us the giant crab I killed to save yourself? Ruin? No, the other ones. We were all being attacked. None of us can move as quickly as you can, nor with as great an ease. We couldn't get past them. You kept on running. Oh, well, you mean when I stopped and I just made sure? You kept and running. Also, it wasn't for no reason, Yagu. Yeah, Errol. Errol. Whoa, no, we were there because of you. Because of you and Ruin. We, if we went to that Fisher site and we could help them, then we could have the meeting to know where your paintings were. So basically what you have been saying is that Ruin only cares about his own goal, while you have also done the exact same thing. Well, we tried to help you. I literally gave you guys multiple outs and for me to go out on my own. I haven't dragged you guys with me. You guys willingly came, first of all. Second of all, I was a distance but I showed with Ruin, if things got too hasty, I compromised on my principles and was willing to kill a crab if it was too much. And I made it clear my principles. So in that case, do you prefer to keep your principles or us? And aren't your principles the and same as my pride? The fact that Brick is standing in this room should answer your question as he points to Ruin. So your principles aren't any different than what my pride is to me? I've sacrificed my principles. You haven't sacrificed, I've sacrificed your pride. my pride. Oh, fuck no. Give that a rest. Tell me when I haven't sacrificed my pride. Even right up. now. You're doing this because you're afraid of all of us. You're not doing this because you legitimately believe you try to kill us. You're just I... saying what we told you to say. But I truly don't remember. I have I have apologized. I, I'll i even give up all the gold I have right now, if that means... Go ahead. I all do right. have an, I do have an important up. No, shut it, question. Cop it. Errolt, enough. I have another question concerning Ruin. Ruin, you said that you're trying to be better, and these clerics, they're... I remember you saying they are assisting you in such. Yes? Trying to be a better person. Um, I don't remember. Uh, I just know that I wanted to be a better person. That was it. I remember being a fairy and my next goal was to just become better. If, if not, it would make me stronger. That was it. So let me ask you this then. Are you trying to be a better person because you want to or because you have been collared by someone more powerful than you, and you're doing it because you have to. It's a desire, I guess, to become stronger. That wasn't I've what always, I asked. But that's what it is. I... After turning into that dragon, my mom, my memory is... It's fuzzy. It's... I don't remember much. I... Just to help you, you don't know the answer to that question, actually, yourself. Really? Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Sorry. For the yeah. I just... Right. My goal right now is to help you guys achieve whatever your goals are, to fix myself. What does fixing mean? Does that mean becoming better, becoming stronger, or becoming a dragon? In a sense, yes. I want to become a dragon again. I want to be better. I want to be good. I... 
as a chromatic dragon, we're judged basically just on our intentions. And yes, I I probably murdered hundreds. I've probably ruined villages. That's why I named myself Ruin for the longest time. I I want to be like I guess not like a metallic dragon but I just want I want to be alone eventually I see I want to do good deeds if I could become great and have stories told about me not Ignis the hungry but Ignis maybe even the friendly I don't know but listen, I've told you the truth. I didn't mean to kill you guys, or, or to try to kill you guys. I I don't remember Aki. what Aki said about me being half and half. I was a black dragon. I was a whole black dragon. That was it. Yes, you were partially moonstone dragon. I remember some books I've had assistance in being having read here. Yogu, you can tell if somebody is manipulating this spell. Does he seem to be resisting? No. I for all near speak the truth. Hmm. And while we're on the truth, I wanted to ask my questions now. First, Ziggy. What are your intentions with this group? I'd like to think it's run its course. I wanted an apology from you a week ago. I didn't get it. I got asinine responses and jokes. I think maybe I should take a break. See what Fiona's gotten up to. I assume it's letters from her. Maybe you should all just give me some space. Understandable. That's what you need. I don't know. Maybe you can find someone to take up my room for a few weeks. I don't know. Maybe even a month, couple of months. I don't know. But all I know is that, Ruin, I gave you a chance a week ago to apologize. You're mortal now. There's something you have to learn. Mortals are very much aware of their fleeting existence. And the one thing a group of people can do is so some sign of brevity and break from that bleakness that is reality. It's something you need to learn. And I don't think I can help you with that at all. I... I, I'm trying to learn, guys. I really am, okay? You can't just expect... a dragon to just change like the flip of a coin. Even the worst... Humans can't change. Hmm. Yahoo. I only had no problem doing Bruce. that when Bruce stabbed you. Yahoo, please help me here. When Point Bruce... of fact, Errol. It was not I who stabbed him. Sorry. Bruce. When Bruce stabbed the shit out of you. Yahoo, you don't think I'm I'm evil, right? Or selfish? I think you uh, are, but at least you're trying not to be. Anyone apart from Ruin, uh, make a perception check, please. Except for that okay. dog that was barking. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, you. There is a wild dog in your room. No, oh shit! Oh, damn. oh well. You're surrounded by dire wolves. What the hell? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, pretty pretty easy to see. 
uh, all of you realize that Ruin's color has changed slightly to a light sky blue instead of like the silver itself is turned more like a sky blue. Ruin, should your choker be doing that? Uh, doing what? Well, he's glowing. And will it flip down? A different then, color. Pull it down. Uh, is it the same color as the other half, the moonstone dragon half was? No, it's more like a like a beautiful summer day sky hmm. uh, color will be. Uh, I don't know what's going on with it. Uh, you touch it, it just sparks a little ah! bit. Hmm. Okay, I've been doing that recently. It's... Well, <clears throat> we're all in the business of, as you said, Yago, cards on table. Uh, Bruce is not getting a say in this, so I'll be telling you all anyway. When we nearly lost Aki, he very really died. It was only a miracle he was back. Bruce asked him a question. He asked Aki, If you want to right now, we'll just leave, the pair of us. In his panic and his fear. Bruce, and by extension, I suppose myself, since I'm along for the ride. Really, was ready to leave if Aki agreed. The Dread Domain, I mean. Born from a place of fear. Terrible fear. But there it was. It's not a decision I agreed with, I would never even suggest it. But there we have it. This is probably this is true. The same. Like I, I said, I gave you guys an out, so wouldn't have helped yes. with you. But ultimately, we did not want one. We wanted to help. And I'd Your like rules. to point out. Oh, sorry, Yago. Please continue. Do you think you would have made it on your own without our help? No. But that's not the point. The point is, is that I still gave you guys an out. For all that would have happened, assuming the same events would have happened, one of two things. Either A, I would have been in the service of uh, that necromancer, or B, I would have been killed by mind flayers. Still doesn't change the point. Well, I also gave you and Ruin a warning about that I didn't like the spa. I sense some type of evil and still the two of you went down to the witches and I'm not holding it against you so just to clarify next time something like that happens do we just want us to abandon you would have been more honest there was nothing deceitful in us trying to stay and trying to help it's a uh... It might be an unusual culture is a strong word that when I uh, when I begin to talk about what a caravan is uh, to to me, but st sticking out problems and ultimately going or leaving together is what a caravan does. We are very often the uh, the odd ones out, but we're the odd ones out together. So if we leave, or we have to leave town, or we have to fix a problem for each other, this is who we have to rely on. This is as close to family as caravans get. Nobody thinks they're going to end up in a caravan. Nobody started there. They just find themselves there. You may find yourself in the middle of nowhere, but... Sometimes in the middle of nowhere is where you find yourself. We helped. Because we wanted to. I'd like to make a request, actually. 
for you, Errolt. On our walk back to the Radiant Citadel, you accuse me of bias towards greed and power and things draconic. And I can only ask, how, how could you say that to me? How dare you say that to me? How My experiences with things, yes. Really? How dare I yes. say that to you? Yes, and let me really? finish. All things draconic, greed, and power. I place no value on greed. If I did, I would never have left home. I could have stayed at home, played the good, the good air, and lived a comfortable life. I didn't, I left. Life on the road. The only positive experience I've had with anything draconic has been my friend Aki. The cult of Tiamat took the one who was to be my ward. The same person who... <laughs> you threw it in my face that Ruin would seem to be doing the same things that he did. You don't think... I don't hurt myself every single day whenever I think back to that. And you threw it at me like that because you were angry. I threw it because yes. it's true. And... It and I'm was an off. abominable thing to do to me. That's why I ask, how dare you? Yes, you could be honest, you can be truthful. It does not make you any less awful to say it. Throwing the worst day of my life back at me like that. So my request is, get off your pedestal. I'm the because one on the not... pedestal? Really, I'm the one on the pedestal. I'm the one looking down on you. I'm the one exaggerating the truth. I'm the one assuming that someone else's worst day is the only day. Really, I'm the one doing that right now? I'm also yes. the one on the pedestal tolerating behaviors that can either A, get us all killed, or B, will just not cater to the group? Really? I'm the one doing that? Really? That Compared is exactly to you? What I've, that is exactly what I've said to you, Errolt. You can see that twitch, that glazed look in Bruce's eye, which is often a dead giveaway that he's just keeping things in check and is making a very good go of it right now. Yeah, go ahead. Be pissed off if you want to be. Really, honestly. Go ahead. The thing is, a lie is still a lie, no matter how sweet, how tender it is. The fact that I told you the truth and the fact that you're so uncomfortable with it means that I must have somehow hit the nail on the head. Now, That's granted... Exactly my point. It is the worst day of my life and you threw it back at me like it was nothing to you. And how dare you do such a thing? Nothing you've said I haven't told myself over and over again every single day. For someone else to throw it at me, someone I trust... Someone I call my friend. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Well, you know what? I'm sorry you didn't like what I had to say. And that's, that's the honesty. Apology. So you're not sorry you hurt me? I'm not sorry I told you the truth. I am sorry if it did hurt you. Aki leans, in. Aki leans in quite close to Errol. I, you seem different. I'm more pissed off is what I am. I've had to evaluate some behaviors, Aki, okay? And I've made a lot of comparisons with the time that I've had that prick inside my head for all of three goddamn months. And I'm seeing a lot of similarities between a lot of people, including myself, which... To be honest, freaks, freaks me the fuck out, even now. So, excuse me if I'm not exactly at my best. So, if you want to do what you did, probably a week after we first met, point a, point a staff at me, threatening to use magic on me, go ahead. You see me doing this. These are... These things are not happening at the moment. Nobody is threatening you. I say you seem different because you do. Not to hurt your feelings. 
This has left a mark, this person who has been in your head, or is there some of him there? To my knowledge, he isn't directly there. It's more like I've had to think about the time with that person in my head. And I've thought a lot about a lot of behaviors that have been demonstrated by all of us. So... Of all of the unpredictable powers here, I think I must qualify quite highly, considering the last week, considering how I looked at. Are you, do you consider me wildly, wildly dangerous, and do you consider me to be intentional? Somebody that is not worth having around? To the first, I say yes, but that qualifies everybody in this room. To the second, whether it's intentional, that's a tough one to answer. It's a really fucking tough one after these past three months. If I tell you it's not, that is not enough. No, it's not. Hmm. Harold. I've been inside that head of yours plenty of times. I, I, I've never had a family and I'm not going to pretend I've had one. But like Aki said, this is in fact a caravan and whether we're associates to you or whatever we are. I want you to be honest, even if, even if you hate us or hate me specifically, are you just mad at us? There is only one group of people I actually legitimately hate on this planet, on this world. You all know what that group is. That is a group I am not going to make any compromises to should my partnership here end or continue. So firstly. Secondly, yes, I am pissed off at the moment. And I am pissed off at you, Ruin, because I've thought of behaviors of three months of having to tolerate it. And it also pisses me off that I try to be as honest and open with you all as possible. And it is met with scorn. So, yes, I'm a little bit peeved at the moment. And I'm a little bit peeved that we're thinking that this entire process is going to produce anything different than what happened when we were in the Domain of Dread, which is something's going to go, someone's going to have an excuse saying, oh, I don't remember, or oh, I didn't do this, and again, try to kill us all. And I will have to make the decision to try to do the right thing. Now, maybe I shouldn't say right thing. I can't even say right. Try to do what is the more reasonable thing, and just try to make up for it while you, because you're a dragon, because you have power, because you're greedy, it'll all be looked past. Mm. So, you'll have to excuse me if I'm not exactly chipper that. Does that answer your question, Ruin? And then some, I guess. In that case, then, you should be wary of uh, of myself if some magic user can get into my head again. And you or think I'm indeed... not? Or you should be wary of Aki if another dragon brings out that magic in him. And if that's too much for you, well, as you said, no one is forcing you to stay. What is worth the effort, the efforts that you mentioned, that you made, are not seen past. I see the efforts that you made, as with everybody else. You know, no offense yeah. to you, Aki, but I think it's pretty goddamn clear how seen it is. 
I don't understand what you want. A, a badge? You're a member of the caravan. We all try to work together. Without you, it might not work. Without one of the other of us, it might not work. You contribute, and things work. Everyone, uh, roll a perception check while this conversation is happening. Okay. Okay, Elk. Okay. Um, while saying that, as uh, so you'll say to Elk specifically, oh shit, I just rolled a d20, I don't know why I did that. Um, it's a 15 for me. I'll just say, I haven't tried to. I've kept quiet, I, I haven't tried to scold you any, any way, Harold. Because I. I do think maybe a break could be helpful. <sighs> like with that, Ziggy will get up and go to his room. Ziggy, before you go, there's one last thing I wish to say to everybody. This is what Bruise once, specifically. Ruin. Bruise is su Bruise is suggesting that you shouldn't remain with the caravan. He sees too many parallels to what happened with Grave and Dreg. And I wish to put that to everyone. Uh, sorry, can you also make a perception check? Um, is it? Uh, oh. Please. What? Yeah. yeah. Everyone just made sorry. Sorry. Everyone but ruin or? No, you. No, ruin. You also, yeah, because. Oh, I heard everyone but ruin. That's why I was. Okay. Oh, for the first one, it was everyone but ruin, but this one yeah, is yeah. including you. Ooh! Ooh! Ooh, Ooh nice. nice! Okay, you all notice that even while in the midst of this conversation, Yagu has dropped the spell, but let you without telling you. And you begin to feel that you can tell a lie. Why did you drop the spell? Well, to be honest, it's only less for 10 minutes and then did it feel like Casimir to give again. And by the way, by the looks of any of your faces, I have keep noticed them. Um, I don't think any of you liked during that conversation, which probably means something, right? Probably. Mm. I... Yeah. I... I don't know if it makes you guys feel By the way, and Errol will pull out the dagger. You can have that back. Yeah. Just lob him the dagger. Ooh. I... Are you sure? It's... I don't need it. All, all I will say is I don't feel much... I don't feel like a, a group sort of mood in the minute. Yeah, do I? Are we done here? Well, no one going to follow up on what Bruce had said. Fine. It's. Uh, I don't think it's my place to decide members. Yeah, just, not really just to add that here. atmosphere. Uh, you all notice it starts to rain like really heavily, and there is like a thunderstorm going on outside. Oh, lovely. Have to go check on Gri anyway. Uh, 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 Ooh, thank you, Mom. Harold is gonna go outside to go check on Gree. Make sure he's fed and kept sheltered. As you all begin uh, separating and moving to your own isolated rooms, um, you go outside uh, through the rain, covering yourself, looking for your horse, and you get to the stable. And Bree is there, healthy, looks well fed, neighs at you when he sees you. 
Good to see you, boy. All right, and uh, been feeding you well. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Been having not so sort of great time. Anyway. You have a good night, buddy. And um, Errol's is gonna head out to his room. The only one who hasn't pissed me off today. As you head back <sighs> to your room, we shift the camera to Bruce. As you enter your room, you place the uh, envelope um, down on the side and begin taking your your traveling gear off. Um, when you put the envelope uh, down, you feel that uh, there's something like a uh, some sort of jewelry inside as well. Hmm. All right, so I, I did a wisdom save a bit earlier on. I got a sixteen. I'm assuming that'll be enough to allow Bruce to read it without assistance. Grand. He'll open up the letter to Bruce Lockwood. Well, father wouldn't say this. He knows I'm going by a different name. He'll open up the letter and start to, to read it. Uh, sorry, your father knows you by a different name? Yeah, because he, I did, Bruce said to him that he would be taking a different name. So, he would have told him that. Okay, well. Unless you're recalling that, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, instead it says, ooh, magically changed uh, 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 Bruce uh, Moonbear. Yeah, Moonbear. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it says, Dear Bruce, I thought to write to you uh, as I have uh, acquired some information that might be valuable to you and your friend as we discussed something briefly at the auction. Sources have told me that uh, your mother's clan has migrated due to the land around the lake now tainted by some sickness. Uh, perhaps your ties at Candlekeep can assist you with this matter uh, and your friend. I have also uh, uh, provided the, uh, uh, a necklace of your mother that she had kept. I'm sure she would, uh, she would have uh, wanted you to have it. Um, uh, you see, as you kind of look inside, there's a silver necklace with a uh, with a locket. Um, do you open it? Bruce, Bruce's hands tremble just a wee bit at this, both the information where the clan is and that we might be able to do something with the lake. And this locket, pretend, he's the, pretend this is my monocle. Just kind of takes the locket, very trembling hands, opens it up very, very, very reverently. You open it. Uh, a piece of paper kind of firstly just falls onto your lap, um, but you see two pictures there. You see a, a, a young you and a, a, a young uh, father, your father. And is there a picture of his uh, mother there as well, or is that just this is the locket his mum had, and it's of dad there's, and there's no baby picture, Bruce. but there was a piece of paper that kind of okay. Fell down, which is folded up. He t picks up the paper and he opens it. And there you see a picture of your mother. Puts his, he puts his hand over his mouth. Just... It looks side to side. He just can't believe he's not seen even an image of his mum for, well, nearly 20 years. Good to see you, Mum. As you look at the picture, actually, uh, Bruce, how does your mother look like? What do we see when we look into her picture? If you're okay to do that. Of course, yeah. She has her hair in a sort of almost like a, like a top knot style, then sort of twisted into a ponytail. Apart from that, she, she's uh, bald. She's a pretty typical example of what I would imagine a, an orc woman would be. You know, she's very, she's tall, very robust. Um, she, she, she looks like she lifts, put it that way. <laughs> but um, she also looks a little bit older. Because um, certainly in my head, you know, prior to the, um, the changes they did for 5th edition, orcs don't live that long. So in my head, that's why she, she died of natural causes, basically, because she got older and maybe she got ill or something. Um, but she still looks like an athlete. A very, very f 
fierce looking eyes, quite a strong jaw. Like she would not be considered um, beautiful or handsome by human standards, but uh, um, she's she's a, she's a picture of almost. If she was to lose her temper, you could imagine. Oh shit! Run. <laughs> she has that look to her. Beautiful. And as you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. And as you sit there looking at your mother in this picture, I'm going to shift from this room to the room, another room, uh, which says uh, Aki Flamacaster. Uh, you're inside there sitting down. Um, and you have the book in front of you. It's up to you if you want to read it now, or do you want to forego and read it later? Uh, no, Aki, Aki will read it now, but he will uh, just, you know, he'll mutter something to himself in Draconic, uh, just hoping that this has some answers in it, and slightly cursing out the, the Traveler for seemingly abandoning him the last week. Okay. Um... As you open the book and you begin to read, uh, prepare for uh, quite a bit of uh, lore dump here. So make notes if you oh. if you guys want. So just, just <laughs> bring it on. Oh shit! Note taking—that's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what? But it'll be it'll be it'll be quick. So da, 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 where are we? Okay, here we go. Da, 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 da. Okay, so you begin uh, flicking through it, and it begins talking about um, the history of the uh, of the castle itself, how it was created, what the structure of it is. You get to a point where, through the pages, you also see uh, like a bird's eye view of the uh, the map and what it used to be. Then it kind of goes into the history of what it is now, geography. Uh, uh, in terms of how what the walls and the castles are in more modern time and its structure now but everything in that kind of is uh, is similar to what you physically saw as well uh, from what was described um, you get to the bit about you begin to check seeing um, how this castle came to be uh, so the history of Dragonspear Castle uh, is, is about a century ago. Uh, Darius Dragonspear was a famed half-dwarven adventurer of the north. Early in his career, the bearded half dwarf rescued and befriended Halatathalir, an ancient copper dragon who laid beneath three hill hillocks on the western edge of the high moor south of the Misty Forest. You would know that that's pretty close to where the Dragon's Flare Castle is. In the years of the Raging Flame, 1255 DR, which is around maybe over 200 years ago, Darius... We are 1,492. 1, 1,400... Yeah, so, yeah, over, um, over two, 200 years ago, Darius seized a fortune in gems from a beholder layering in, in, in the lost subterranean city of Kangalim. I'll write all this and give it to you later. Yeah. In the depths of... I've, already, I've, I've already fallen way behind. So I've given up. <laughs> That's right. In the, in the depths of what was once a uh, Falrom Duki of Hunabar and decided to retire. The bearded half dwarf chose the, uh, the site of Halatathelia's lair to build his castle. The copper dragonborn had grown tired of constantly fighting of th thieving ox and goblins, but he was loath to leave his lair, so this castle was created. Darius uh, gathered humans and dwarves loyal to him and built this large and splendid structure composed of massive central keep surrounded by a strong ring of four towers, which is the inner, inner ward, and an additional <laughs> nine great towers that kind of represent uh, the point of a spear around, around the rest of it. Um, in the years that followed, Darius and Halatathlia were often seen in the skies above the high moor, with Darius wielding a massive spear against foes on the ground and employing a magical horn to summon his troops when needed. When needed. Darius' great weapon earned him the, uh, the title Dragon Spear itself, and in time his castle came bearing the same name. They succeeded in purging much of the southern moorlands of this 
of their influence. However, nearly three decades after the castle's completion, Halat Athaliyah succumbed to a wasting disease which left him increasingly tired and weak. As word of the dragon plight spread, more than one wizard who, uh, who coveted the copper... Ooh, I've lost that. Uh, where was I? Uh, Co Copper Dragon's Horde used shape-shifting magic to infiltrate the ranks of the Dragon Seer Castle resident and investigate how the treasure was guarded. In the year of the Whelm, 1290 DR, uh, a mage named Ithrius Kasalia crafted a spell that allowed him to teleport Hal Halathathala away to the fallen lands bound to in slumber. This mage then revealed to Darius, the dragon's friend, what he had d done by means of a false nightmare that showed the wizard creating a portal in the dragon's lair through which Halatithia was taken. So he created this lie saying that he was taken away. In truth, the portal was created by an outcast devil named Armoros, known as the Resolver of Enchantments, who this mage had called upon. The dragon spear portal led to Avernus, first of the nine hells of Barthor, Bar but required the sacrifice of a mortal to activate it. When the enraged Darius plunged through the portal, he triggered the devil sorcerer spell, which immediately trapped the half dwarf and opened the portal in both directions. Oops. The newly opened portal quickly disgorged several devils in. Armoros's employ into the bowels of Dragonspear Castle. While Darius' followers battled the incursion, the mage looted the dragon's horde and then returned Halatathalia back to where he was, which was in the inner ward, bound in magical slumber once again. Armoros returned to Avernus, content to have created a powerful new form of portal known as the Soulbind Portal, but uh, the mage lingered near, observing the destruction he had unleashed. Charming. Mm -hmm. Once the devils were defeated, the mage called upon several other dragons he knew, telling them to could the copper dragon of Dragonspear Castle slept and is near death, and it and its horde were easy prey. Three young and ambitious dragon headed his words and took wing to Dragonspear Castle. They met over the fortress and fought, destroying Halatathalia and much of the castle before slaughtering each other. The last survivor, a red dragon named Rugaroth, was enraged to find the horde it had fought so hard for looted so that only a few coins were left. Anyone, uh, you can make a history check or you don't need to if you remember the name. Oh my god, I do though. Which name? Rugaroth. Rugaroth? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, Was not important enough it. to remember. Yeah, you, 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 you don't remember. You just skim over the name. You're like, okay, keep reading. Um, uh, a few coins, I'd say. It was seeking the triumphant and overconfident, uh, and found him gloating over the best wine of the uh, of the castle in the upper chambers of the central keep, and blasted him with a fire until his bones crumbled to powder. Hmm. In the years of the creeping, where are we? Uh, creeping Fang, an alliance of hobgoblin chief from the High Moor seized the castle. They used it as a base which they raided caravan roads and the lands around, gathering orcs and trolls into ever large bands until Waterdeep and Baldur's Gate raised armies and cleansed the castle of the in between in the year of spilled blood, which was 1315, about 150 years ago. The uh, victors set an armed temple to Tempus called the Hold of Bat called the Hold of Battle Lions in the cellars to guard against creatures using the portal for it seemed indestructible. So with this knowledge you know that there is some sort of a portal s still there Hell. from this knowledge. <laughs> um, <laughs> when we were there, hmm. Harold's spanner didn't do what spanners do. 
Yeah. What, span. For the portal. For the portal to hell, that's what he's asking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. Span is gonna span. No. You keep reading, yeah. anyway. You, uh, you get to a point where it says... The war came to a sudden anticlimactic conclusion when words of the a demon, a demon's incursion into the material plane reached the ears of Asmodeus. Asmodeus then ordered this demon to cast Seal Portal, also known as the Gate Seal, uh, on his creation. And this is what had sealed, and probably why nothing was triggered during this, uh, during his check or his wrist spanner. Now, by the Feast of the Moon, the sword calls uh, became quiet again. With the sources mist, uh, there was a thick mist that was formed when they, was, they, were, they were invading by these demons, um, which you still saw while you were there. Um, uh, there was a small shrine in the ruins, but you aren't sure if it still remains there. And you kind of get the gist of that, but I'll give you more details after that, uh, so that you are aware of that. Okay. All right. Sorry about that dump. I'll just, I, I just thought I'd give you give you something there. Um, moving from. Give us everything. What are you about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I almost ran out of notepad room. Yeah, there was yeah. more there, but yeah, I skipped it. But I'm, out. Yeah, we're going to. Right. I'm on a computer. Give me uh, five minutes, and then we'll 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 finish this off now. So as you as the room, um, we go into uh, Ziggy's room. Ziggy, uh, you uh, sit there. What were you? What are you doing? Yeah, uh, just gonna read the letter, but I know because we're on a bit of time. Give me the footnotes. I assume it's from F- Fiona. Yeah. Yeah, it's from Fiona. Is it a good or bad invitation to come back to Merin as quickly as possible for something dang nasty evil that I need the party to come with me for? No, it just is tell just me that now. No, oh, okay. it's just a uh, asking if you're okay, uh, and if there's anything. Uh, just she hasn't heard from you, and she's worried. That's the letter. Ah. Oh, fuck, yeah. I forgot about that. Ah, well. I'll write something up in the morning saying, yes, and I'll probably be staying over soon. That's what I'll probably... I'll write that response. All right. And as we kind of step away from this room, um, you all sleep for the night and gain a long rest, as you do. And uh, you wake up into the morning as you... One... One extra thing. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, Ziggy will be also wiping blood that was dripping from his nose and eye every time they mention the mine, mine flyers. Okay. Ooh. He will have hidden it while and kept his uh, face as clear as possible while it was happening, but he'll have cleared that up. And as the morning comes, you begin to hear the kind of winter birds, robins uh, of some sort, uh, flying past, um, pew, pew, chirping, pew, 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 pew. chirping as they go across. Pew, 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 pew. And you all, uh, you all come to the room um, awake, uh, not knowing what exactly you guys want to do. But uh, as you all kind of gather up, you realize that um, Ziggy is not there. So I'll head up. To Bruce, I will hand him the 67 Platinum and ask, I need to use the mirror. After that, I'll be out of your air. Alright, free to use. And I'll take the mirror and I'll um, just say, I uh, made it back to Material Plane. Would you mind coming to Cloakwood? That would be the best place to meet. I don't know if Errol is saying this out loud. He's just using the mirror immediately. Right. And uh, you get afterwards... You, that? Get, you get a response back. He'll say it'll take me a few weeks to get back. I am preoccupied. Uh, Can you wait that long? I'll, I'll be there. Okay. okay. I'll be there. And uh, Errol, uh, well, just keep saying to himself, I'll be there. Just give it to Bruce and then just walk out. Okay. Consider that tribute to your newfound god. And as he's leaving, go to Cloakwood. So is that 67 Platinum into the chat yep. of holding? Yep. <laughs> wow. Oh. Oh. As you guys sit there, uh, 15, 30, about 45 minutes pass, still no sign of Ziggy. Hmm. Eventually, Jogo will go up to his room. Okay. 
Yeah. The door oh. is. Uh, w would would you keep it open, uh, locked or locked or unlocked? Oh, probably just shut, but not actually locked. Okay, so the door's not locked. Okay, I'll tell you just open it. No knocking. All right. Yeah, you open it, um, and you see Ziggy there, kind of half on his bed, his foot still kind of dangling on the side. Uh, a piece of paper on the floor, a second piece of paper as well. And you just see blood dripping from his ears and nose that's made a pool onto the ground, and he's not moving. We can suddenly medicine check to see if he's alive. Okay, make a medicine check. Ooh, yes, 25. Did you oh, check? Nice. Uh, he is cold, but not dead. Is he damaged? You look around to see if there's any stab wounds or anything like that. You see nothing apart from blood dripping from his nose, some from his mouth and his ears. Can I also say something? Mm -hmm. If it's okay with you, he's muttering something slightly. Mm -hmm. he, um, yeah, you, you can just about make it out, but he says, sits. he sits inside my head and he should live among the dead. He sees me in my bed and eats the mind inside this head. Just repeating that over and over. Ooh. Then he mm. then keeps going and says, He is at the end of days, he lies all other ways. He comes when time's a maze and all of history is weeping. Damn. Um, Joku will spend as much points of lay of hands as needed to stop the bleeding. You see the divine energy, you know, uh, across his body, but you see the effect. He's still unconscious, and you don't know what's wrong. Um, the fine sense. Do I sense anything <laughs> from that? No. Then Jogu will pick up Ziggy and will bring it to the rest of the group. Alright. As you pick him up and in a slow motion you start bringing him kind of down the balcony around, down the steps, you all kind of turn around to see this still blood soaked body of Ziggy pale to the skin, even paler than he usually is, and as he is brought down, and you all begin to kind of worry and panic. Oh my god! We will end their session here. Oh. As the elderly at the door, like looking back, looking towards out, towards Ziggy. Yep. Uh, we will return back after a few, uh, some time has passed, and see what happens from there so thank you everyone yeah. for watching i hope you guys enjoyed it all at home thanks to dan curtis and uh, james webster for his music and their art uh happy halloween even though it was yesterday but you know it's uh <laughs> i was gonna say it's still halloween somewhere well here it is uh and uh, we will uh we will catch you guys next week and uh please stay, please follow our, our, uh watch our other um campaigns as well where we'll be airing tomorrow and on sunday but uh until then have a good week and have a good night and stay bye, bye. Yes. bye. bye. good night